the end, all we have is our memories. Tracing the rings of life, we relive the challenges and triumphs the world offers. This week is no different. Life was here long before disc golf and will continue on after we depart. How you live while you walk this earth is all that matters. As we approach our final day of competition, remember, champions will rise and fall, but their impact carries on, returning life back to the community that built them while shaping the lines of the future. The 2024 PDGA Professional Disc Golf World Championships ends now. Hello and welcome to the final round of the 2024 PDGA Pro World Championships. You're watching Jomez Pro on Commentator's Christmas. It is. I'm Nate Sexton, and this is Jeremy Colling, and this is the best day of the disc golfing year. I came dressed for it. We got our uh, World's Tees tanks. Don't yeah, forget about tees. these bucket caps that we got for sale. I think we've restocked these things twice already. Just want to go ahead and throw that out there real quick just because that's going on right now but more importantly today bust a bucket baby oh yeah <laughs> oh nice isaac robinson is out here he means business trying to be one of the few players in disc golf history to go wire to wire if that were to happen isaac robinson would be a two-time world champion currently he is sitting on a three-shot lead over a very determined niklas antela this is a player who's finished multiple times in the second place position at majors. Can he finally rewrite history and be the first international male world champion in the MPO division? Calvin Heimberg, can he finally get off the snide and win his first major championship? And Luke Taylor, my goodness, his play this week has been incredible. Really the first time we've gotten to see him, and he's been here all week. Huge drives, big putts. The moments yesterday on 14 and 15 back-to-back, -back, unforgettable for this World Championships. So many storylines are going to take place today in these next 18 holes. Can't wait to get into it. Hole one, par four, 758 downhill. You've been watching it with us, we hope, through the week. You gotta get your drive down and safe. Left is better than right, as you don't have a low ceiling to contend with on your way up. But as always, you got a tight green wrapped with out of bounds. I really do think that's basically always the case out here at Ivy Hill. And defending world champion, and at 32 under par, he's your leader from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Isaac Robinson. Wider today than yesterday. As long as it misses that tree, it'll be just fine. Good adjustment from yesterday's drive. From Finland, Nicholas Angela. Yeah. Nicholas yesterday with a seven under front nine. He's going to need fireworks today if he wants to put any pressure on your leader. We've only really seen six or seven shaky holes in, from Isaac, and mm -hmm. it was that early stretch yesterday at this very course. And they've already played 90. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. And we've seen every shot he's thrown all week. Starting off on the lead card. They will play 90 by the end of today. Oh, 90, that's right, 72. Correct. But still, 
five out of 72 is pretty dang impressive. This is nice and wide for Calvin. Reminds me of uh, Paul McBeth's performance at the Crown Point Worlds in 2013. I believe Paul McBeth only had one bogey all week. Wow. En route to winning his second world title. I believe that was a three putt. Okay, all four drives in a very similar position, in a great position. Nice and wide for Luke, good trust. Oh, great shot. Sixteen feet away. A little bit tighter to the right side. Not a bad shot at all. You can see how being out left just gives you all the airspace you could ever want to get up this hill. Mm -hmm. The right side is the safer side to miss on, so Niklas just making sure if that thing swings back in bounds, it's going to have about 20 to 25 feet. Isaac going full turnover. And just doing what he's been doing all week. He's been an absolute force so far through this tournament. The approaches on this hole specifically have all been incredible. Now Calvin from C1 Edge. Actually, outside the circle by a couple steps. Oh, beautiful. I talked to Calvin mm -hmm. after round four. He was lamenting the fact that he just hadn't had that clean round yet. I don't know, honestly, if a truly clean round is even possible at Ivy Hill, but <laughs> Calvin is in that make all the putts type of mode today. It has to be it has if to he be. wants to realize his dreams at this world championship. And Niklas... Look at that. Not 2025. He's fully outside the circle, but that was a very, wow, perfectly placed putt. That rhythm is so smooth. Looks so easy. Oh, no. Not sure if that's just a little bit too far left, if that's caused from the nerves, or it's just sometimes you miss them. But I would not, ex I mean, I, I can excuse him for being nervous. Sure. It's a situation very few people have ever been on league card last round in the world championship. Oh, this is trouble from Gannon Burr. So we check in with his performance. Oh, see his starting score, 24. There are a few players at that score Eight back of the leader. These guys, Eagle McMahon, I believe Ricky Wysocki, also in that that 24 mark, they're going to have to play the round of their life today. It's a decent shot, similar to where we just saw Niklas make his putt. Really wide for Ricky, but good height. Much safer this time. It's going to have a lengthy putt, I would think. Yeah. Good start for Eagle. Gonna need a lot of that today. And I don't I don't 
really think there's anything you can do in the next 17 holes if you're gaining burst starting off with a double bogey that can get you back into contention at this point. 10 back? Yeah. It, the that, way that Isaac's been playing? I regretfully agree with you because I would love to say that he has an opportunity to go on fire and get back into it, but I just don't see how that's possible with the class of players and the number of players that, that are ahead of him at this point. That dude's going to win some world titles. Don't you worry, Gannon. And Gannon fans. There will be a 1X and a 2X probably next to his name in the next five years. Ricky, yep, about 27 feet, maybe less. You can't have that. Slightly left. Well, Eagle certainly doing what he needs to do early. That is going to be a deflating miss from short range for Ricky. Getting that flat wow. with the big skip. Yeah. Yeah, getting it down to flat just gives you the skip that's all distance. Mm -hmm. No fear of flaring left and testing the OB. Taking advantage of that short grass. Uh -oh. I don't love this though. No, that's heading, oh no. Heading for a sandy landing. Okay. Small errors are acceptable. But again, it's got it. You, if you're eagle, you got to shoot course record today. Sit. That'll help. Yeah, I think course okay. record by multiple strokes is probably what's required to actually be in with a chance. Time will tell, certainly. Yeah, I think uh, the number. I think the number to be in contention would be 13 to 14. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Something like that. I mean, and, and once you're starting to breathe down his neck from chase card and he feels that energy and that pressure coming from a great player like Eagle or whoever else is going to be charging today, making a push, maybe he feels the pressure. But the obviously the most likely scenario is going to be Niklas or Calvin or yeah. Luke if he can step up, up and make some putts after that short miss on one. Hole two, par three, 327. We just saw it low or high hyzer, honestly, with the right hand. Just want to bring it in with a little bit of speed. Make sure if it does contact the out-of-bounds area, it's got enough pace to skip. If you're going high, spiky angle, probably your friend here to get it to stop before moving too far left of the basket. That's too easy. You just don't have the luxury of missing holes like hole two on this card if you want to have anything to say about this title. It's just, I know it's just one stroke, it's just one hole, but you got to get the birdies. And this course gets so tough in places that the easy ones like this have to be routine. And it's looking pretty routine right now for the card. Fast stop. skip. Okay, it does stop, but just outside the circle. I bet you that if that hits grass first before the sidewalk, I bet you it's only 20 feet away. Again, high left. And just like that, Luke is now eight back. It's a tall task, not impossible. Niklas matching stroke for stroke to start, as will Calvin.
least it's not any bogeys for Luke. A little bit of a shaky start, but mm -hmm. plenty of time. He's been the breakout star of this tournament. You know, it's in terms of a guy that I would say was not a household name at all in disc golf. It's been a joy to watch him, and I hope he can kind of steady things and protect this opportunity that he's built for himself because he's in such a fantastic spot to finish great. He's silently having an incredible season. He's had some great top 10 finishes throughout the year. It's just not a guy that's been on our lead card coverage. So it's like hard to really see that and always check who's getting eighth place. Sure. Luke Taylor is one of those guys. Oh, he's a great player. But, but he's finally breaking out here in front of our very eyes. In front of the biggest audience of the year. I think going to be great. Great future for him. Definitely making some new fans with his exciting play. Isaac, nice height here, nice width. Nothing but the middle of the fairway waiting for this one. Great shot from Niklas as well. Plenty of speed behind this. Right Man. up to the OB line, yeah. skipping back. That's so big. That's beautiful. I'm not sure that there's much of a, a preference to being left or right on this hole. Okay. Distance most important. I guess I could see maybe the left side being a little advantageous because there are a couple branches. It's funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking that myself with the difference between Niklas and Isaac and Calvin. Niklas being tighter on that right side back there about 80 feet short of Luke's big drive. If he's planning on going backhand, which I think he is, he's going to have to move this from left to right because there are branches that swing out over OB on that right side. Basically just gonna go dead straight. Little bit of swing. Slow down. No. Nah. That sand strikes again. Now Isaac intentionally playing this one a bit short because he's found the bunker a couple rounds in a row. That's the miss that we like. But how close is he? And you wonder as well, you know, I think he certainly wants to play short, but also. Oh, hold on. Hang on here. Uh, I don't uh, think the, so. Yep, yeah, that's out of bounds. At, you start to kind of get that little bit of a match play feel when you're front running like this. And he's going to be in a situation where he's seen the yellow flag That's for right. Niklas. And That's now right. it's like, oh, well, 30-footer for birdie doesn't sound too bad. I know he's guaranteed par, like an opportunity. Yeah. Right. Play, make sure I don't make a mistake. Yep. Give myself an opportunity that I, as Isaac Robinson, make about 97% of. And just give myself an opportunity to have a nice clean stroke and walk away with another stroke in the back pocket. Well, he has the luxury. Oh, look at that. He's laying right, right okay, up. Okay, so he's a little farther back than I thought. He has the luxury of playing defensive offense right now. And until they find a hole where they can make up some strokes on him, he can, can do that for the rest of the round. How far do you think he was there? Oh, oh there it is. There it is. Yeah. That's the guy we've been used to seeing. Good save. I think he was somewhere in the 45 to 50 range. And... A missed putt on that left side can find its way in the bunker so quickly. Sure. And there's just really no reason to take an unnecessary bogey when you're not going to lose any strokes to the guy that's closest to you. That being said, Calvin, also close, putting for a birdie. And that's the no-nonsense Calvin putting that we love to see. That was direct, started off in the middle of the pole, Perfect. Only birdie on the card. That's my world champ right there. Yeah. 
Let's get back here to the chase card. Eagle McMahon, you know he's going to go big on five. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. All the way on the flat. <laughs> oh, past it. Past it. <laughs> oh. That's perfect position that it, for this shot right here. He's going on the up and up over. Slope. <laughs> That's crazy. Nice and wide. Lots of height. Sit. Doink. Yes. Absolutely perfect. And it's hard to really describe how difficult what you just saw was. It's well, it's easy. Yeah, difficult's the wrong word. Difficult's the wrong word. Rare. You're right. How rare. Yeah. It, that skill set is, maybe. It, it's very, very easy if you have that skill set, but so few people do. Even in this sport where you have the best of the best, only a few of the best of the best can do it. Eagle made that look too easy. Hole four, par three, 392. Very treacherous downhill shot here. Hazard area everywhere in front of the hay bales. Everything outside of that that's short or long or right is out of bounds. From there, you're going to have to go to a drop zone. So you would much prefer to land in the hazard and have at least the opportunity of that saving par putt if you don't find the green. This is one of the quicker two-stroke swing holes you're going to see. Very, very dangerous. Calvin, very wide. Does it have enough to get over the bales? Oh, it jumps up, but just doesn't. And I think I'm going to put that outside circle one, judging by what I just saw, where that landed. I don't think it got all the way to the hay bale. So it, if you get all the way to the hay bales, you're still like just barely inside the circle. So yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Going to be kind of a big putt with the penalty. Isaac, come on, man. Flies it perfectly. Give this man a challenge. <laughs> Such good angle and speed control coming in there on a very scary green. Just makes it look not scary at all by going with that blunter edge and wow. just setting it down very soft. Niklas, this looks a little short as well. Oh, boy. Gosh. Lead's getting bigger, guaranteed. Yes. Could be getting a lot bigger. And that's driven nicely around the outside. Yes, Ooh. doesn't even have to deal with the bales at all. Now needs to sit down. Don't you dare. Thank oh, you. Thank goodness. you. Oh, these stakes are just another couple of feet past that. That's what I'm talking about. Best behavior. World's final. Come on. <laughs> Spotters and spectators have been doing a great job so far. Oh, Niklas, good effort. Costly, though. Two-stroke swing coming. Oh! Ooh. Big putt. Catch a little bit of the top. Feel good about that par. There is the first birdie of the day for Luke, and he is under par. Isaac's lead is about to go to five strokes with Niklas's splash out right side. But we still have 14 two-stroke swing holes <laughs> to play. <laughs> that must have been a great feeling for Isaac Robinson to see that disappear behind the hay bales and mm -hmm. know that he had parked a very difficult hole. Pick up two shots on Niklas, widen the gap just a little bit. I don't think he's going to want to have anything to do with this hole right here. It takes top-notch distance to get to this top shelf. From there, it's a big hyzer, but everyone else is going to play some kind of shot to the bottom, to that next pinch, and then pitch up to the top here and walk away with your par, hopefully. 
I would expect Luke and Calvin to attack for birdie. I'm not sure Niklas will, even in the position that yeah. he finds himself in, losing a couple shots. I would expect Robinson and Antilla to play this for par. But seeing this tee shot, Calvin and Luke know best thing that Isaac can take here is a par. So there is a door opening potentially. This guy's drives on this hole this week have been full on boom daddies. And that is a camera turner right there, Luke. Well done. That's a point. That's a Jomez point. You get to redeem that on our website. Got a great forehand angle from where he just landed. Potentially also has the up and over available. But I think you'd like to swing a little more left if that is the play yeah. you're trying to draw like, up. Potentially that. I'm not quite sure what Calvin's footing is going to look like, but I think that's, he, that's far. I think he's going to be fine. And he's just typically not bothered by uphill run-ups. This will be telling. Let's see how much yeah, he tries what, to bite off. It's the par play. Absolutely. Niklas has got big power, but... The uphill power is a different type. He can manipulate a disc to go very far, but he doesn't have that insane 80 plus arm speed, 80 mile an hour yeah. arm speed. Yeah. And I think that's what you need to get up to the top. Who do you think takes a distance contest, Robinson or Antela? I, I think of them as fairly close. That's a really good question. Probably in the mid fives, both of them in terms of where the, what they're going to be able to hit yeah. on average. Uh -huh. Very, very powerful players, right. but not... Tier one. Yep. Oh, this is all the way to the top in a great spot for Calvin. That's a bit low. Oh, no. Uh, your options are very wide or very high, and you just kind of didn't pick either. That's a huge mistake. Instant bogey. Can he save the bogey? I think so. This one's sailing. Oh, this is way left. Oh, oh no. no. Opportunity to save the par, at least, all the way up there. But the two big drives are in danger of actually losing strokes to the par play. I was almost thinking that on the tee when you were saying, oh, you know, opportunity knocks for these guys because they're announcing their play as being par at sure. best. Mm -hmm. I would almost argue with the class of players we have here, they're announcing par. It's not just par at best. Yeah. They're making a par yeah. if they make that Here's shot. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to throw can, it four times. And that can put another kind of pressure on mm -hmm. the aggressive player because it's like, well, I could birdie, but I mean, I have to, I have to take risks. And when they're playing for that par, I mean, Niklas Antela, Isaac Robinson, if they lay up for par on this hole, it's happening. Yeah. If there's not some kind of catastrophic error, crazy wind, spit out. Like, you know, they're going to they're gonna make that happen. And now they're going to come away taking strokes off Calvin and pending this putt on, from Luke. We'll see what happens. He can save the par right here. Now pulls it right. With the extra power that Calvin and Luke have, it comes with great responsibility. You have to pick and choose those spots, and you have to execute properly. And unfortunately for them, they're going to fall another stroke behind our leader and our second place. Oh, no way. Not what you'd expect from Eagle. That's an instant bogey after a great start. And again, I just don't see him shooting a 12, 13 under if you're not burning seven, one of the easiest holes on the course. And it's not just not a birdie. It's a little worse than yeah, that. That's it's, what a, it's the red number. Uh-huh. Somehow, the percentage went from 81 
with the full field and with a cut, it went down to 69% for birdie on seven. A little windier today and sometimes, I suppose, but still kind of surprising. My bad. <laughs> Hole six, <laughs> par three, 341 going downhill with OB everywhere. Looks kind of downhill. And then when you get to the pin, it really goes downhill right behind it. I've seen a lot of players sort of thinking about this whole, like, just throw up an ace run. And mm -hmm. you're probably going to go out of bounds anyway. Mm -hmm. So just make sure it's near the pin. You'll be in the circle. Very, very difficult hole to get close to. And this is really where things broke down for Isaac yesterday and gave the biggest opportunity for the field to get back in it. And he has made the correction in bounds 28 feet away. Game plan executed. One of the better shots we've seen. I don't feel like we've really seen anyone slide it no up No one's parked park. it. Not that we've seen. It's sort of an insane thing to try to do. Absolutely. Because it probably means you're out of bounds till the very last. The only way I think someone could park it is if they threw Heiser Flip putter at it. And that's a very scary thing to do. You're very, you're, I mean, you're likely OB the entire flight. And then you've just got to take the gentlest fade right uh -huh. at the end that's saving you from... Be, bo a certain bogey may be worse. These are good shots, though, to start. That's going to be a, a do-or-die putt, but I'm sure he's going to go after it. Probably 40 feet. I don't know about this one. That's very yeah. high. It's going to have to put the brakes on now, and it's not going to. Fairly close for the par putt. I don't think it was a layup. I think it was just yeah. a, a nervous run. I mean, and not not nervous in any Oof. way that would put a knock on Luke. A, a healthy amount of nerves when you're putting right towards OB down a hill. Good save from Calvin. That putt's looking good. It's very crisp today. Agreed. Good pace. Oh, Niklas unable to put the pressure on Isaac here. An opportunity to widen the lead even more. Oh, this is you a just can't. dream start to this round for Isaac Robinson. You know, I, I doubt if he had a, a great night of sleep last night with the opportunity that's waiting for him. And this is just such a sigh of relief type of start for him to have widened his lead this much this early. Doesn't look like these guys are putting the pressure on yet. No one has grabbed a stroke. And he's really dictating everything right now. Six shots over second, seven over third. My buddies and I just helped grow the global disc golf community. Check it out. We got our favorite shirts at Quirky Goodies. And a percentage of the sales proceeds go to the Paul Macbeth Foundation. They build great disc golf courses all around the world. I picked up three shirts for myself. This one's my favorite. Hey, if you're like me and you're always looking for a discount code, use this one. Jomez Pro 15. That'll give you 15% off. QuirkyGoodies.com. Buy a shirt. Make a difference. On to hole seven, par three, four, oh, three, Island Green. If you find any out of bounds, you're going to that drop zone where we just saw Eagle McMahon. It's probably a 90 footer. Not mm -hmm. likely to make that save happen. We're seeing that low, wide backhand uh, be really, really successful here. Isaac starts it off plenty wide and stays in bounds on seven. So he is gonna be making up five strokes on these two holes alone with six and seven from yesterday. There's like no opportunities right now for these guys to close in this gap at all. Well, and if you're Isaac Robinson in command with the tee box, that one comes out of your hand and in your head you're going, 
There goes another one of your opportunities, boys. Mm-hmm. Because I'm making this birdie, so <laughs> mm-hmm. clock clock is ticking. No cap there, brother. Oh, sit. Okay. Very direct from Heimberg. Perfect shot. Pulls I hit. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make Gen Z lingo sound not cool by just saying it as a 38 year old adult. I think it's working. The mirror is my intention. Just this is what you sound like. Good birdie for Luke. And a star frame coming. First one today. Good opportunity down one, but unfortunately Luke's putt fell out left. These guys are bussing. I'm done. I'm sorry. <laughs> Check in with Simon here on 13. Just took Wow. A... Oh, boy. So wide. How much distance does this have? All of it. Did it hit the path? Green flag. Okay. His angle is going to be incredibly easy. Going to have that. Oh, yeah. There's low ceiling. He could even run this if he wants to. Not really even a low ceiling from that far up. That's perfectly done. Birdie coming for Simon. All the way up into fifth place right now. So Simon is now nine under with the bogey through 13 holes. Perhaps saving his best for last. It's a good strategy, I think. Uh, certainly. Hole eight, par four, 671 going up the hill. We've seen some great turnover drives from these guys, throwing that big backhand, eating up distance, and then just settling towards the middle of the fairway. That's what you would love to do. A little bit left is probably ideal because then you're going to take that single fairway tree out of play give yourself an unobstructed lane up to the basket to collect that birdie three plenty of turn <laughs> plenty of turn plenty of distance yeah i think that's exactly where he wants it to land isaac hasn't really made a mistake in any way whatsoever the approach on three coming up short was a position play with Niklas already being in the bunker. He's playing hole five for par. Everything else he's thrown has been perfect. At this point in the round, it's just ideal start. Really, the best these other guys can do is just match him shot for shot. A great turnover for Luke. You have a good lane on the right side of the tree coming. At this point, Calvin's the only player to take even a single stroke off of Isaac, going all the way back to hole three. Probably effectively about 400 feet away here in terms of how much power it's going to take to climb this hill. Calvin gets a pin high. Good approach. Nikola's going to start this off to the right side. This is looking really nice. Woo. 
Ooh, that pushed that right side a little bit more than I thought at first. But inbound safely. With a great chance to make birdie. And this is just going to be perfect. <laughs> Where do you find the cracks in the game? Like, how can you expose or cut into this lead if he's going to continue throwing shots like that? Not possible. Great approaches by everybody. Yeah, right, great putt. I mean, at least they're hanging around, you know? I think there are good opportunities for two-stroke swings, or at least one-stroke swings on 9 and 10 coming up. It's possible. There's a lot of out-of-bounds. It's They're long par fours. There's a, there's a ton of OB on every hole. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not even close to done here. But they're running out of daylight the way that this guy's playing but not even close to a this thing having this thing settled with the difficulty and the treacherous designs coming up i mean just think about 17 waiting like that mm -hmm. that is such a tricky hole and then so many of these other ones i mean what what even do you think is the basket that is the farthest from OB. How far away is it from OB? Like 33 feet? I know round one out here, I had four OB shots that were all inside the circle. And that I just found those randomly on that round. Sure. So, so there's at least four. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would say the farthest from OB is probably, it Eight, could be 18. 18's basket and it's probably like 35 feet maybe. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you're so not wrong. Every single shot has that pressure of losing two strokes in an instant. Hole nine, one of the tougher holes out here, I would say. Par four, 834, pretty narrow. You'd like to get at least 400 done off the drive, ideally more like 430, and leave yourself in the 400 neighborhood up into the green. You can't really go for a lot more oh, than 430, though, because there's kind of a choke point in the middle of this fairway. That, oh my. Kind Does of that a big call. Safe? Did, I don't. It looked out to me, but okay. did it touch safe? That's kind of a big call. <laughs> if he's going to be able to advance, yeah, for sure. This is needing a skip, and gets oh, it. Goes through the wickets. Gets it. How many times this week has that shot hit one of the stakes and stayed out, man? Those stakes are driven in the ground. They have been brutal so many times. Looks good. Wow. Leaving quite a bit for the second, but he's got quite an arm. Yeah. So maybe it's not as big of a deal, but I would expect that to be at least 425, perhaps as much as 445 short of the basket. And this should be just fine for Calvin. Soft check coming. Similar location. All right, well, it took... Nine holes to see the first air from Isaac. And it looks like he is getting the distance. Okay. Riding the OB line over here. And Starting to swing. That's beautifully done. Yes, it is. But a long way to go to save the par. Big opportunity coming up here for everyone throwing their second shot. Uh, yeah, just no problem. A long distance into the pin, it just gives them more opportunity to throw a cooler shot. It looked like a, it looked like a half swing. That was so good to get all that distance and perfect accuracy as well. 
Oh, it gets it to flap, flip up flat. That is going to be so good. Niklas needs to join that party with a important approach here. Love the look of it so far. Oh, this is dialed. This is absolutely dialed. Okay, so the card's going to be grabbing some strokes. How that, many? That was clutch. All three of those yes. guys. An opportunity was there for them. They all did so well. Not even putts of any kind of consequence left. Isaac to save it. Okay. Two strokes for Luke, two for Calvin, and two for Niklas to finish the front nine. But if you're Isaac, you did what you needed to do on the front, and you've got nine holes more of this stressful holding off the... The charge, but five strokes, actually four over Niklas now with that two stroke swing, but five over Calvin and Luke Taylor is back in the mix. We have the same four at the top as we started the round. Yeah, and it doesn't look to me like the chase card is putting up numbers that are gonna do anything. Ezra Robinson is, but he's Whoa. a few cards back. Through 15, 15 wow. nine under. Great round he's putting together. But I think it's going to come down to these leaders to decide this title. There's nine more holes remain in the world championship. Who's going to have the best day of their life? We'll come back. We'll find out. See you there.